What's up, guys? I've received the most emails I've ever gotten about one particular topic, and I know that I needed to shoot a video on it, and that is how to clean specifically cloth seats. Now, we may brush a little bit on, on carpets as well, um, but I'm going to focus on, on uh, cloth seats. As you can see, I have a 2009 Subaru Outback. It happens to be my wife's. Uh, so we've driven a lot um, in spring, and it is now summer. It's about 85 degrees, hence I'm not wearing any shirt, really. Um, and I'm trying to hide in the shade, too, so I'm going to play with the camera a little bit here. But uh, we've done a lot of rock climbing. Thank you. And a lot of rock climbing means rocks and dirt. And so we're gonna go into a lot of the specifics of uh, the, you know, the steps. What kind of stain is it? How do you approach that stain? And then of course you see around me, I have vacuums. I have different sets of cloths, meaning microfiber and terry towel. We're gonna talk about that. Uh, you know, regular bucket with all kinds of little tools and brushes in there. Uh, all the way up to extractors. Uh, I don't have the extractor here because we're not going to use it, but I, I have the tube and I'll show you the technique if you have an extractor uh, and then steam machines as well. So we're going to go, just like we did in the leather cleaning uh, video, we're going to go from uh, very, uh, you know, advanced or expensive meaning machines all the way down to a bucket and some hot water and, we'll, and I'll take you through the steps. And there's a few things that you need to know that that's different than approaching leather. So we're going to do that right now. Right. The first step goes without saying, and that's to remove all the plastic or rubber mats and the floor mats, uh, just to see what, what you have. You got to be able to see the dirt uh, or the stain. Occasionally, I like to use the, you know, a, a tube here, compressed air, to get in here and blow out the seams. I like to blow out the seams, because so sometimes if I pull too much, it, you know, I work on a lot of sensitive cars, so nice little air, not too much pressure, psh, blow everything out. Is I'm going to grab the vacuum, and I vacuum first. I know uh, some people say, uh, that may not be good, but this is vacuum round one. At the very end, I vacuum again, but I don't like to clog up any of my machines, nor if I do it by hand, uh, I, I don't want to have all this extra gunk in there. It just gets in the way and you can embed stuff in the, in the fibers. So we're going to sort of be talking about uh, in the next 20 seconds, once I get into this uh, steam machine uh, and extractor, we're going to be talking about machines really versus hand. Uh, cleaning. So it's kind of machines versus hand. And is one right or wrong? No, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's more like one's pro, lots and lots of cars, and one is still works, maybe just a tiny bit slower. But quite honestly, I use I use the hand method uh, a whole lot more just because it's safer in my book. And again, you guys know I do uh, a bit crazier cars than the ones that I actually own. Um, so yeah, let's hop in and I'm going to show you uh, the, the motions with the extractor. What I'm going to do is put some tape down here and we're going to do three sections and, and see how they come out. Let's get started with step number one, which would be the, the most complicated, the most expensive, and that's going to be an extractor. I have a Mighty Light 2. I don't have it here, one, because I'm on a hill and it just rolls like crazy. Two, if I turn it on and try to have a conversation with you, it's going to be really loud. So I just brought the tube to show you uh, how professionals might do it, meaning when they're doing lots and lots of cars. This can be useful. I don't use it a whole lot anymore. Um, okay, so you have your trigger. Uh, over the years, I've taped this up because it actually gets a little hot. Um, you can pull the trigger, and when you pull the trigger, a fan is going to come out of uh, super hot water, or at least warm water. Um, and what it's going to do is it's going to spray out, and then you can suction it out with this. So the rule or the method for using this, is pretending this is on, is you're going to pull towards you, right, at the same time pulling the trigger. So the water is going to come out, and you're going to suck it up at the same time. But, so after that, you're going to push forward in that same exact line, but not pull the trigger. So you can, so it's sort of like hitting that same section twice. As you're pulling, you're squirting the water. Squirt, 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 stop. Push forward and don't put any water so you can soak it up. So the whole key to using these machines uh, and doing anything, quite frankly, on cloth, for me, is water control or saturation control. There is foam and sponges and all kinds of, you know, depending on the seat, uh, things and cushions, uh, and if they get soaked, the inside gets soaked, it's very hard to dry off and very hard to, to wick out. Uh, a lot of times that'll cause more staining. Um, so 
think about right, that. The next option is, of course, to use a steamer. I know this has been all the rage and very popular. Why? Because the extractors are a little bit more expensive and these tend to run in the thousand dollar range and up for you know, professional and they go down uh, even smaller and smaller. But again, you're going to uh, get what you pay for. So around a thousand or 1200 bucks, which is about half the price of an extractor, you can have a steam machine. Now, steam machines work great, um, but they don't actually extract. So that's sort of a ma big main difference. And sometimes people go, oh yeah, I didn't even really think about that. So we're going to actually do it on this one before uh, we get started. Uh, I put some blue tape. I think I had that in the last little section or, or session here. Um, I'm doing that. It's not necessary, so you shouldn't be doing this. I'm doing it for you know filming purposes so I can show you know before and afters and things like that. So next thing is microfiber versus ter terry towel. Technically speaking, meaning from the book, uh, terry towels are best if used, meaning you can wrap it um, you know like this on uh, carpets. Why? Because again, we're worried about the moisture. So this soaks up a lot better, uh, you know, water and can, and can help get into that high fiber, which is carpet. When you're working on cloth or Alcantara, typically, again, by the book, uh, you'd want to use a microfiber towel. It's just better at picking, picking that sort of thing up. So in this case, obviously we're going to use microfiber towel. So I'm going to wrap the steam and you can use different heads. Uh, this one is just, uh, you know, the right size. It's, it's square or uh, triangle. And I'm going to use, and I have the trigger on here or this nozzle that has the three prong as opposed to the jet. And we've talked about that in a few other episodes. So uh, the first thing you can do is take it and just rub the, the area. You can do that and see if that's successful. Or you can put the towel down on there and just steam the area. Again, you might want to do that with, uh, with more sensitive interiors. So for example, instead of what I'm going to do now, because I know this is pretty tough. It's a newer, you know, it's not a 1950s car. So if this was an old school cloth, I'd put it down like that. And then I would steam like this. Now that would help you um, pick up a bunch of stuff, but not at the same time, not really do a whole lot of damage to it. In this case, uh, like I said, we're going to put it in and let's get to it. Okay, after round one, we see we got a little bit of dirt going on here. It's nice and warm, uh, and this is also pretty hot. And one of the advantages of using the steamer is that it's steam and it evaporates. It's, it goes, uh, you know, out of the out of the cloth very quickly, which again is very important to us. Um, so that's uh, that's a huge advantage to using steam. All right, now we've covered the machines, the extractor and the steamer. But if you're not going to want to deal with those, or you want to spend the money and just want to kind of bang out your car and get it as clean as possible. These are the next two steps that I'm really going to try to focus the, the meat of the conversation uh, on. So a lot of times people take uh, warm water and put it in their bucket, right? And fill it up. And what they'll typically do is they'll put dish soap. And is it the end of the world? No, nah, I don't think it's the end of the world, but if push comes to shove, I would much rather use laundry detergent. I mean like the tiniest little bit of laundry detergent and kind of just get a little bit of uh, cleaning action in there. Because uh, again, laundry detergent is cleaning cloth and, and, and all kinds of fabrics and things where that might be a touch strong. But it's not the end of the world. That's just a little tip. So anyways, you're going to have your scrub brush. Uh, you can put it in there. Uh, I have some warm water in a bucket. So let's run outside and I'll show you this method. But you just got to be a little bit careful. And then we're going to go into the fourth one, which is kind of the way that I do, you know, 99% of my cars where I just take a little bit more time, less water, uh, and I get really great results. So. Let's head out in the 90 degree weather and keep cleaning. All right, the third option again is very popular. You're gonna take your, your scrub brush or your carpet brush um, and you really wanna rinse it out. So I'm trying to do this off camera, but you just kind of get all that water. Again, we're concerned about the water. We're also concerned if this is a very old carpet, or old uh, cloth, this may be a little bit too aggressive for this, but I do see a lot of people, uh, you know, like I said, doing this and I, I wanted to show at least the right, the right way. Um, one of the big concerns um, for doing something like this is that if there was a stain here, I've just increased the surface area of that stain. I may have lowered the, uh, 
you know, the color, if it was dark brown, it might be light brown, but it's going to be light brown in a larger area. So uh, beware of that. You don't want to saturate this. Um, and so sometimes, you know, I don't have it hooked up, but I'd have the wet vac right behind it, soaking up this water, which would sometimes make the extractor good. You see, I'm trying to fill your, your mind with all the positives and negatives of each uh, process. And then you make the call. But for me, um, I really like this for the carpets, the deep fiber carpets, but I'm not too crazy about it this way. It's a little, little too aggressive. Come back in with your uh, microfiber cloth and get in there and try to soak up as much as you can. And then off camera, um, especially because it's my wife's car and she's gonna kill me if I get it too wet, I'm gonna go in and vacuum this up and try to pick up any more. But it looks halfway decent. It's just not, in my opinion, as shiny as shiny, as clean, uh, I'm thinking of paint, uh, as clean as over here uh, when there was less water. So uh, let's, uh, let me pull the camera in and show you after one pass. Again, you can do a few more passes and it might be good. And then I'll show you on these two panels here, uh, the last little step that, that I would do um, that kind of makes, just kind of makes your life easier. So let's do it. Okay, and lastly, let's focus on this little area here. Um, and this is what I would typically do, as I said before. Um, I come in here with a very specific fabric Alcantara uh, or carpet, anything with fiber cleaner as opposed to, let's say, plastic and leather and steering wheels, etc. So come in here and I do a very light mist. It's not a whole lot, right? And it stays on top of the surface. Then I'll come in here with my detail brush, my little one, and I like to do little tiny circles and just kind of work that top section. So this may take a little bit of time here. So once that's in there at the top section, I'll come back, put a few squirts on my scrub pad. Just lightly come in here and agitate the surface again. Now the goal is to keep uh, the dirt suspended so that you can come back in and pick it up with the towel. Now I also have this little scrub brush if you want to go, if you find little areas, let's say, I wouldn't use it on this one, but just as an example, you know, a little extra uh, oomph or if there's a, you know, a stain or what have you that, you know, you, you couldn't get out, you can certainly uh, use a smaller little brush. And you come back in and you go after it. Now, we can talk a lot about how to go after it. Um, so you can see clearly it's coming off. Uh, we can talk about how to actually do that. There's multiple, multiple methods. You can come in here, you can stomp it, you know, put your fist in there. And then there's another one where you can twist, right? Now on this one, twisting is not that, that bad, but on really old seats, twisting, it's going to be kind of similar to the headliner. If you were to go into, you know, those old school headliners, let's say on like Cadillac or something, and you stick your finger up there and you just turn your thumb, you would twist that right off the cushion, you know, the cushion, the, the stuff that's on the ceiling to, to deaden the sound. Uh, you'd pull that right off and that's when it caused it to sag. So you want to be, um, you know, careful about how you do it. You can scrub it like this. Again, this is a Subaru and it's relatively, relatively new. Um, and it's designed to be beat up a little bit so I can be slightly aggressive with it. If it's not, then you just want to kind of tamp it. So um, that would be pass number one. It's a little wet right now. Um, and we'll, we'll keep working on this. And then when I'm done, I'll show you... Uh, uh, I'll show you, I'll pull all this up and we can see, um, you know, the different methods. And there's no one right method. It's just, uh, you know, the, something that fits for you. Meaning if you have an extractor, great, use it. If you have a steamer, fantastic. If you don't have any of that and you're in an apartment, use a bucket. If you have some cleaning tools, they can help you uh, kind of achieve the same sort of thing uh, without going out and spending a crazy amount of money on, on big machines. But, um, you know, sometimes I like to let the, 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 the chemicals and the you know the products themselves get in there and work themselves out. A lot of this, especially for this one, has um, you know traces of hydrogen peroxide in there that will get in and lift a lot of that dirt out, so you can scoop it up. Remember to go back in, vacuum it out, and uh, you should be all set. So that's kind of a, a very quick, even though it's maybe a, a, a little bit longer video on how to clean cloth seats. Again, interior brush that you can still use. Uh, you know you still use for leather. I like to use it here just to kind of tickle it and see if it comes off and you know, use the least aggressive method possible. And you have your scrub pad that you can go in, have little brushes that you can go in as well. Just be conscious of the two main things, 
oversaturation or moisture control? And two, what are you cleaning and how are you cleaning it? Are you cleaning it too aggressive? How old is the seat? A few things to think about when, you are, uh, when you're working on cloth seats. I've always, as always, if you have any questions, shoot me an email at Larry at AmmoNYC.com. Uh, this is probably the most important car I've done in all, of my <laughs> in all of my time. It may not be a $40 million car, but uh, it's for a very important person. So I have to continue doing this. I'll shoot some video afterwards and, and show you the, uh, the after shot. Thanks for watching, guys.